friends and welcome back to our homestead. By your request, you asked me to show you my garden, what it looks like right now. So let me take you on a little, on a little tour to show you what's growing in my garden, what's doing well, what did not do well, and just show you around, okay? Guys, why are you so loud? Why are you so loud, guys? Why are you so loud? Yeah, my sweet boys. Why are you so loud? Yeah, my sweeties. Yes, you are my sweeties. You've been fed. You've been watered. My sweet boys. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to start from my tomatoes. I have three rows of tomatoes and they go way, way that way I have, I think I have 78 bushes of tomatoes and they're doing very well. Um, they're very healthy, they're blossoming. I see lots and lots of fruit, lots and lots of fruit on them, but they're not turning red just yet. But then again, this is only 4th of July weekend. So we usually get tomatoes a little bit later. They're very healthy. I do notice that I have some bottom leaves have maybe a possibly something fungal going on so i need to address it and i think the reason why i have that issue is because um it's been raining almost every single day we've been having lots and lots of rain and um and i think that's what is happening but if you have seen um how i treat tomatoes i have treated them obviously in the spring with I planted them into a big, big pile of good quality compost that we have producing ourselves uh, because we have all these animals that just produce a lot of manure and then it turns into compost. So we have these beautiful tomatoes. I praise God. They look healthy. They look delicious. They look good. And I have two different kinds. I have Roma tomatoes that will be for uh, mainly for sauce and then i have um an heirloom and i forgot the name of them i have an heirloom as well that's more for like sandwiches for eating that sort of thing so you'll notice that some of them are really tall and some of them a little shorter but trust me they're all big and they've been pruned and they still very very big all right so these are my tomatoes and of course my husband have has all his solar panels right next to my garden because it gets the most sun so that is why i have so solar panels are right here as well right next to the garden as well can you hear those roosters those are my freedom rangers they're going to be ready for harvesting in exactly one week all right so these are my three rows of tomatoes so we're praying that it will produce enough tomatoes for us to um, put away for the entire winter so we don't buy tomato sauce okay so let me bring you into the garden now you probably remember my battle with pincher bugs and here's the evidence of pincher bugs eating my greens i started these are my turnips i started them from seed and then I had to add more because we already ate them. And here's one of the traps I have for pincher bugs. That is a leftover um, wine making and I put it just in a dish and all these pincher bugs are going in there to have a drink and that's a trap. So these are just for turnips. And unfortunately we don't have a very big production of beets because pincher bugs ate them as well but these are the only beets i have so it's a pretty small uh, row of beets you will notice that i'm not pulling out these guys so question what is this and i have them all over the garden i'm not pulling them out they're not weeds my friends these are not weeds these are if you haven't guessed yet i will give you the answer they're called purslane common purslane and they are delicious and super super nutritious they have 
mild lemony taste. They can be eaten fresh in salads, just as uh, an addition to a salad, or they can be cooked just like spinach, and they are wonderful. So this is already empty. I need to plant some other stuff here. We had radishes there, and it's all eaten. All right, so then I have two rows of green beans and they're blossoming just yet um again i had to restart all my green beans because the spring seeds that uh, came out of the ground that germinated were completely completely destroyed by the pincher bugs everything was eaten every single leaf was eaten and only i had left um, were little tiny stems and nothing grew from them. I love the colors of these beans. So, but right now, and I had to start everything all over. I had to start from the seed all over again. And, um, and these survived. So they're doing very well. Again, we always amend our soil with compost and, uh, they're doing very well now. So pretty soon, pretty soon we're going to be getting beans from these two rows of the garden i always plant flowers well these are perennial flowers that most of them come up every year because they attract bees and that's the reason why i love to have right in the middle of my garden i always like to have flowers growing because they invite bees and we need bees to pollinate everything so I love having, it's not just pretty, it is pretty, but I love to have them here because they're pollinators. Okay, so here I have a long row of zucchini plants. And zucchinis are also late this year because I had to start from the beginning, I had to start from scratch again. Why? Because the pincher bugs ate all of my zucchinis in the spring. I started them from seed, they germinated, they popped out of the ground, and then the pincher bugs completely destroyed them, down to a stub, down to nothing. So I had to start from seed again. I started them in a greenhouse and I planted them. So they are blossoming. There are some that are male flowers, but I also found that some of them are already female flowers and their zucchinis gonna be coming very soon there's i see already one over there so again it's a beautiful row of zucchinis they look gorgeous how do i fertilize them well i fertilize them with um remember i made um a fertilizer for the tomatoes using baker's yeast remember that and if you have not seen it i will uh, put a link to it uh, in the description and maybe up here somewhere I'll stick it as well So you guys can take a look at what I fertilized them with so I fertilized the tomatoes The zucchinis and my cucumbers aren't they gorgeous. Let's go take a look at the cucumbers Just like everything else these guys are also late in the game because I had to start from scratch in first week of June because they got destroyed by the pincher bugs as well. Some people call them earwigs, some people call them pincher bugs. So I had to start from seed all over again because everything was destroyed. And now they are blossoming beautifully, flowers everywhere throughout. And I already see little tiny cucumbers that are starting up. I ate maybe two or three already and they're so sweet. And they're so, so precious. They were delicious. So these are our cucumbers. And they also look very, very healthy. We also fertilize them with, um, with a baker's yeast. And uh, we planted them in plenty, plenty, plenty of manure um, in the spring when we, they went in the ground. All right. So let me show you our peppers. The peppers are <laughs> a little bit late in the game. I started them from seed, just like everything else, but they are a little bit behind. So they're blossoming right now. I already see a little starting 
Where is it? Little pepper studding up. Guys, what are you doing? These are my Freedom Rangers over there. Making themselves known. So I have two rows of peppers and they're probably gonna be a little bit late in the season uh, because I think I started the seeds a little bit late, but it's fine. They look very, very healthy. They look very beautiful and I see some flowers, the beginning of peppers on them. They might be a little late in the season, but it's quite all right. And here are our greens and they're doing wonderful. So if you have seen our, we have three rows of covered with fine netting to protect them from caterpillars. They are doing great. They are doing great. They're growing so fast. Let me tell you, I don't have, I can't harvest them fast enough. I harvest them and they get really tall again. I harvest them and they get really big again. So they keep growing and growing and growing. They love the soil again, because we put so much compost in here. Why would you not grow? So here, over here, we have two rows of cabbages and they are doing wonderful. They are doing very, very well. No damage from caterpillars. There was some initial damage from uh, pincher bugs, but overall they're doing very well. Beautiful cabbage, absolutely beautiful cabbage. And this kale is gorgeous. Look at it. So we're enjoying fresh kale as much as we want to. And I need to start harvesting cabbage for cooking, for making sauerkraut and everything else. I am very happy the way this came out. It definitely protecting our greens from any kind of insect that come from the air. So we're very, very happy. Look at this beautiful cabbage. I'm gonna try to zoom in. Beautiful cabbage. And like I said, it's uh, coming to be ready for pickup, for harvesting. I'm very happy with them. They're looking very, very good. All right, so this was a three hoop tunnels that we had and like I said very happy with with the outcome and I'm definitely going to do this uh, again the following year and uh, yeah so we love it let me take you over here so the strawberries are done you want to say hi to the chickens hey guys you look gorgeous you resting yeah you resting got one more week one more week beautiful birds so these are the meat birds they are for meat production all right so let me take you over here and i have a long row of strawberries they're done for the season we already harvested um and they are all set if anything you need to come in and start trimming off all these shoots and i need to trim them all up so the strength goes back into the plant <laughs> Uh, we have a row of, we just have one row of, tome, uh, I mean, excuse me, potatoes. And this is just a row of potatoes. Um, we just healed them a little bit. So they all healed up. So that's what we have in this section. And this section, I have my onions. And the, the recent rain, we had a really strong rain. It broke a lot of them. Unfortunately, they all fell down. They were broken down by the rain. But I have, you know, I'm, I'm not too, too worried about it. They will come up, they will stand up. It's not a big deal. I always like to add flowers on the edges of my garden to invite, um, to invite any kind of pollinator into the garden. In case you're asking, what is that sound? Let me show you. I have four of these solar things that I stuck in the ground because I want to deter moles. Do you hear that? They make that sound. That is to deter moles and they shake very mildly into the soil and again, I'm hoping that that will deter the, the moles from my garden. 
Here are my blackberries. They're still very, very green, as you can tell. I have two long rows. You probably can't tell because of all the foliage, but I have two rows of blackberries and we're hoping that the birds don't steal them and eat them and leave some for us and um yeah it looks like we're gonna have a good amount this this year and we also fertilize them in a sp early spring with with compost who doesn't like compost apparently blackberries love it so these are blackberries they are right on the edge of the forest uh they get plenty of sunlight because they're on the southern side, they have plenty of exposure of the sunlight. And here are my peaches. They're definitely not ready yet. And we had an issue with squirrels stealing all my peaches. But here are my peaches. This is my peach tree. So um, we're hoping that they survive this year. Because last year the squirrels stole them all. Even though... Looks like we have good amount, but <laughs> you know, nature versus squirrels. So this is the peach tree, blackberries right next to them. Oh, look, the deer ate my hostas. Oh goodness lady. There's been a deer in our yard almost every single day and she's been nibbling and this and that, this and that. And apparently she likes my hostas. Okay, let me take you to the blueberries. We try to cover our blueberries with the netting to prevent losing them to the birds. And I have a bush of black currant. Let me bring the closer. Hopefully I can zoom in. This is my black currant and I should be able to start collecting it because they're already turning black. So they're ready for harvesting. The bl uh, blueberries are still, a lot of them are green, some already turning. Uh, this bush over here does not have big production this year at all. They kind of slow on the blueberry production this year. Usually they have a lot. But anyway, so we always cover our blueberry bushes. Otherwise we don't get any blueberries at all because the birds get them before us. As far as my herbs, I have herbs growing in many sections of my yard. I have them everywhere. And this little patch here is a new addition this year. We um, brought in a bunch of manure and compost and we planted all of these beautiful herbs here that I started from seed. Okay, and I feel like that's a whole different video about what is growing here and what I'm harvesting and how I'm gonna be preserving it. But I have lots of it and it's beautiful and it's fragrant and the bees love it and I love it as well. Well, actually it looks like the deer likes it as well because she ate my borage. Look at it, all the tops of borage are gone. <laughs> she ate it as well, I guess she likes it. Look at these beautiful flowers. The bees absolutely love borage. I have lots of delicious things here for them. We're blessed with lots and lots of lemon balm. It's blossoming right now, so I uh, should be collecting it right now, but I still have a lot left from last year as well. But lemon balm is delicious, not just in your tea as a nerve tonic, but it's also delicious to eat and make a pesto out of it. Mint is a very important part of my garden and I have lots of it growing everywhere. It spreads out like crazy. And my husband loves when I come outside, rip a bunch of this beautiful fragrant mint and make mint tea. Mint iced tea is delicious. Let me tell you, it is very fragrant and very delicious. We love to sit outside and drink our mint tea. Right against my greenhouse, I have elderberry bushes growing and they're in a blossoming phase right now. Look how beautiful. Look at this, isn't it nice? So um, they are huge, tall bushes 
and again the wind the strong wind knocked them down a little bit so they're hanging on top of my tomatoes i really need to lift them up and tie them up and give them a little support but i'm hoping that uh despite all the bird activity i will be able to harvest some as well and have elderberries to make medicine for my family this fall look how beautiful these bushes are absolutely gorgeous and they're very fragrant too very very fragrant besides the garden i also like to do some of my herbs in the pots closer to the house for easy access so i have different types of basil parsley uh, oregano everything else growing really really close to the house so i don't have to run out when i'm cooking just step right outside the door grab what i need so i can put it always into my dishes as any slavic woman who's going to be doing lots of fermenting and lots of canning i need horseradish and here's my beautiful horseradish growing that i'm going to be needing when i am fermenting pickles or any other vegetables it has natural tannin it has a natural it's going to give that crispiness to your vegetable when they are being preserved so horseradish is very easy to grow you plant it once and it sits in the soil asking for absolutely nothing but it gives you beautiful leaves and very bitter spicy root as well i have only one bush of comfrey and i completely cut it down about a month ago and look it's coming out of the ground like nothing and even looks like a deer came and ate some of the taller branches look at it's <laughs> it's a survivalist it's gonna grow regardless of the soil regardless of the conditions very forgiving plant and it just grows anywhere and everywhere and it's so so good to have on a homestead i have a video about how i made infused oil with comfrey and a salve for sore joints muscles and that sort of thing please go ahead and watch it on my youtube channel here is my lambs ears they call them or woolly lamb ears and because of all that rain it doesn't like a lot of moisture see how the bottom leaves are beginning to break down and decompose but it's okay it's not going to kill the plant i still have plenty of wonderful leaves to harvest and look how beautiful the flowers are and i know the bees absolutely love them look how pretty absolutely gorgeous I love this plant very forgiving as well and even with all of this decomposing on uh, close to the ground it's gonna survive it's gonna spread and it's a wonderful plant to have in your garden and as always oregano I have to have lots of oregano no tomato sauce can be cooked without oregano and I have different kind kinds of oregano growing in my garden and it spreads, it's a perennial, it will come back every single year. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Cats always follow me in the garden. Whenever I go to the garden, these are my echinaceas. Oh, look at this butterfly. Look at it, so pretty. And I have echinacea growing in many places. So I also have some medicinal herbs in this garden as well. Let me take you to the front of the yard and show you. Oh, you fell down. What happened to you, honey? Again, strong winds and rains knocked down a lot of, a lot of the foliage. I'm gonna take you to my raspberries and let's take a look to see how many survived because we've had many visits from the deer oh yeah i see the damage already <laughs> all of the edges have been eaten <laughs> look at it she's been here several times nibbling on everything she can but it's okay i'm seeing some green and eventually i'm gonna have some raspberries to pick that's okay we're gonna have plenty to pick ourselves 
Is anyone else having the same issue? That the rain knocks down all of their hydrangeas? Look how beautiful they are. And they all be knocked down by the wind and the rain. Oh, look how gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Probably one of my most favorite summer flower. Absolutely love hydrangeas. Here is my going out of control patch of wine raspberries. So they are still not ripe, obviously, but they're gonna turn beautiful, deep red color berries and they're very, very sweet. And like I said, it's completely out of control here, but that's what happens when things start growing the way they wanna grow. Look at it, isn't it beautiful? So we're gonna be coming here to harvest probably in a couple of weeks, but right now it, they're not ready yet at all. And then they're gonna be right here. It's gonna open up. These buds are gonna open up and there will be raspberries on the inside, but they look totally different than regular raspberries. We call these wine raspberries. Okay, friends, so, so this is what my garden looks like right now. Lots of things are still green, but promising. And yes, we're harvesting lots and we're gonna be harvesting more very, very soon as well. So we try to grow our garden. Oh my goodness. It's like a duet over here going on with these roosters. We try to grow a garden as organic as possible and we use lots of home remedies. If you like to learn how I do stuff, and things that I use in my garden, please subscribe, follow along, and try to grow food for your family for a whole year. So you can, you can do it from start to finish. 99.9% .9 of things in my garden right now were started from seed by myself in the winter. And I grew them, and I prayed over them, and I fertilized them, and now look at them, they're beautiful. I did have to buy onion, um, starters, those things I did have to buy from a farm. Um, but everything else, everything else was from a seed. And some of the things did fail in the beginning of the spring and I had to restart them all over again. But regardless, look at them, they're doing great. On this note, friends, I hope you're encouraged and try something new.